Tucker, it's so great to talk to you. You played a very bold game, took a lot of risks. After having slept on it, how are you feeling about your eviction and how everything played out? Ah, uh, I'm just, you know, you got to listen to directions carefully. Was Did not throw that whatsoever. I didn't sleep at all last night thinking about it. Um, I don't know if it was my dyslexia or not listening to the directions close enough, but I tried to build the puzzle backwards, meaning the the numbers were facing where the number board was, not us. I had it all figured out where every piece went. I was studying it, walking in. Um, I was fired up that it was a puzzle. It's as bittersweet as bittersweet can possibly be. I wish I could have ran it out in there and broke the curse because I was so about that. And I really wanted to show people that there's no such thing as curses because I'm from Boston and we had the curse of the great Bambino, which was a lot longer than 26 seasons. Uh, but, you know, you can do anything you put your mind to as long as to my own self be true. Um, and I think I have room to improve. I still think I can beat that curse. I'm not at all swayed. If anything, I got more fire underneath my butt now to beat that curse. Uh, and, you know, I'm excited to see what my life has in store for me outside the Big Brother house. Excited to see my friends and family. And of course, my <laughs> very cute, I call him MBHB, Mr. Very Handsome Boy. Um, <laughs> but I also do feel like I just left behind my friends and family so it's hard yeah it's a tough one it's clear to see how many relationships and connections you built within the house looking back on it what do you think is the biggest reason that you ended up being evicted over Angela not I mean I probably this is where I'm at because I put the veto over Quinn I believe um or it was telling Angela that people think she's the BBAI instigator doing those deep fakes. She kind of just ran with that info and, you know, she let her paranoia get the best of her when I would have respected our gameplay. She said she wanted to be top three, four, even five. And I thought I could have done that and still been close with Rubina. Um, but you know, you live and you learn. I don't regret anything. Um, maybe just listening to those rules closer. I was just so reading the puzzle pieces and not listening um, that it bit me in the butt, but is what it is. Time to move on. Hopefully I get another shot at it and uh, yeah, you say you yeah. want to break that first in curse. Are you hoping that there maybe there's some way, like either in a future season, to get back in that game? And would you enter in first again and try to really read? Yeah, uh, no hesitation. I would, I would, I would push people out of the way to be the first one to walk in there, like I did this season. Not, none of that would change. My drive is only more intense. You guys only got to see me in third, fourth gear. I still had fifth and sixth loaded up, ready to go. Uh, but you know, um, it's a very, I was playing a very intimidating game and I knew if I ever got stuck on that block, I would be going home. And, uh, I never thought I would get stuck on that block having the BVAI arena. So hats off to Mackenzie for taking me out in that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, rewinding back to that, like pivotal conversation with Angela, and you saying like, no, I really want to take you to the end and would even potentially take you farther than Rubina. If push came to shove and you were choosing, who am I going to bring to the final two? Would it have been Angela or would it have been Rubina? I was in a final two with Joseph from the beginning. I never, I never officially formed a final two with Angela. Uh, I know she's heavily hinted at it and was even when we were in a conversation like, oh my gosh, this is the name. That's the name. I was like, oh, oh, okay, like we need to come up with like a handshake or something to make it official in my mind. That's what everybody does. So maybe she felt deceived there and lied to, but I know she knew that 
she said final three, four, even five to me. So I could have easily done that. The toughest part would have been to decide between Rubina and Joseph. Rubina and I were trying to form a final two. Um, I kept pushing for it, uh, and I would have crossed that bridge when I got there. I would have stayed loyal to Joseph if he never broke that loyalty. But, man, was he walking a fine line with Quinn and Leah. Um, and uh, uh, Rubina told me that he said to her that she was just a number. I confronted him. He said he never said that. She took it the wrong way. But, you know, they were like this every day in my head of who would be the second, who would be third, who would be second, who would be third. Because I'm just, you know, it's going to be a fault of mine in that game. But I'm a man of my word, and I hate to lie and deceive people. Uh, it's very much not in my character. I wear my emotions on my sleeve. And um, I'm an insane competitor, so. Yeah, absolutely. You proved that. You really, like, put your all into every competition. Was there ever a point where you thought, maybe I should throw a competition or try to lower my threat level in some way? Or did it just become a thing where you just kept winning and then you kept having to win? It just, just was a snowball effect, you know? And, and I'm someone, when I go to play a game, I, it's... You know, you learn it hurts to win is the saying. That's that's the wrestling motto I grew up with with my brother. And it really does. But you got to put in more hours to win. And that's why it hurts, which maybe I could do that on the outside before going back in next time. But you learn a lot more when you lose. So I don't know. Every time I went in there, I was thinking maybe I should ease up. And then the, the competition would start. And I'm just like, I love this competition right now. Because oh, if someone beats me when I'm really trying my best, I have room to improve and something to look forward to and learn from. And um, yeah, that's just it's hardwired in me. Can you take us into your mentality behind volunteering for the block multiple times? Was that something you wanted to be an asset to your game by volunteering? And how do you look back on it now, knowing how everything ultimately played out? Um, I mean, it was ultimately the beginning of my demise, but uh, the first two were definitely strategic. Uh, I hadn't talked any game with Chelsea. I wanted to work with her. And I told her, this is to show you that I'm serious about this game and to start talking game with you. And she never came back to talk with me, which said a lot about her game and that she is already comfortable with people and I'm not. So that in return put a target on her and gave me a reason to put her up. Um, with Cedric, same thing. It was to, one, try to work with more people because I was a lone shark. And two, it was to get Quinn out and expose these power upgrades that we knew were floating around. And Quinn did a great job at hiding it. And Quinn lied to me because we were in the Andersons together. And um, when that was too early on for that, you told Kimo about it, but you didn't tell me. And you, you said you told Kimo because he was up there and thought people were going to go back after him. But I've been up there and you didn't do that. I know you guys have a final two. Uh, it was that obvious. So, being an HOH, you learn and hear and see a lot, but it's a lot more fluffed up, if you will. And being on the block, things are never clearer because people can try to hide or say they can say one thing or another, but their emotions or their hugs and their energy shift, I can super pick up on and read. And uh, that's where I learned a lot of who was doing what in the game. So I wouldn't take that back. The one with t -Core, I was not expecting to go up, but I had to offer it because I offered it to two people I wasn't in an alliance with and I wasn't that close with. And now I'm in an alliance with people that I really do super trust. So I didn't want her to feel like, well, why didn't he offer it to me? And also 
she when she wins something she is so overjoyed and overcome with that emotion that it just flows on to others i've never felt so happy for someone else to win something you know um um, there's not really a sore loser in me. Uh, I know I can learn if it's somebody that like if Quinn wins, I would be like, oh man, but I could learn from that a lot. And when someone I'm close to wins in the game, it was, it's like, how can I just have them keep this feeling that is, is so infectious and so beautiful to see others witness. So that's why I offered to do it for her. That's why I also gave her the five grand because I knew Kim was going to take the veto. And I did, as weird as it sounds, I'm a big fan of the punishments. I had a lot of check boxes I wanted to get in this big brother house. The showmance was the only one I didn't think I would check. And you know what? I did. And I'm grateful for it and glad I did. And um, I think I had the best big brother experience that you could aside from winning that anyone in that house will get. Uh, yeah. So don't regret anything. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Tucker. Uh, before I let you go, I do have to ask about Rubina. How would you describe her in a few short words and where do you hope she goes in this game? Hope she goes all the way. Um, I think she is the, sweetest nicest loudest most uh most proud to be herself girl that i have ever met she reminds me of me she is unapologetically herself she's not afraid to be herself in a world where lots of people are and um she inspires me a lot she makes me crack up she's there for me she's got a huge heart and I love watching her be her and I'm, I'm just very grateful to have met her and very much excited for us to meet in the outside world and share our outside lives and, and extra reinforce that uh, what we have is real.